Welcome guys, in this video, I will share with you my top 100 tips and tricks that you need to know as a PUBG mobile player and I hope these tips will help you to become a better player in this game. Whenever you're fighting in an open field, don't remain focused on the same enemy for too long. Try to look around and pay attention to your surroundings, because gunfire attracts your enemies like nothing else in this game. Here is an example, what will happen if you don't care about your surroundings while fighting in an open field. These guys are too busy fighting with their opponents and didn't even bother to spot a moving car in an open field, this is also known as tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is basically focusing on the same enemy for too long, and this is what exactly happens if you are in tunnel vision. Change your position when you think you have been spotted or when you fired at someone. When you kill an enemy or fire at someone, you will make a gunfire sound which will reveal your intel or location. And the gun sound will attract the players who are near you, especially the ones who are behind you. And this will be the result of staying in the same location. So always try to change your position when you fire at someone. And also don't loot immediately after killing an enemy because the nearby players can hear you and it will be the most common mistake that everyone can make. Always leave one bullet in your magazine in order to reload faster. For example, we have here M416, if we reload from zero bullets it would take us 1.5 seconds. But if you have one or more bullets in your magazine, it would take 1.3 seconds to reload. So this would save 0.2 seconds which may save you in some situations, but if we take a look at weapons like DP29 or M249, the difference would be bigger. To fully reload DP28 would take 5.4 seconds, and when you leave one or more bullets in the magazine, it would take 4.4 seconds, so it will save you about 1 second in reloading time, and this trick will definitely help you in some situations if you can remember. If you jump down from a high place you make a sound. But if you punch while jumping down you won't make any sound. Few examples. The enemy is punching while jumping. No sound. Jump without a punch. You can hear the sound. When you're traveling to zone in a vehicle and when you want to heal, you have to stop your vehicle and heal. This takes around 3 to 5 seconds, and sometimes more if you press the reverse button to stop the vehicle. The best thing you can do is, change your seat and start using first aid kit or any heals, this is the fastest way to stop the vehicle, and this will save few seconds. Be unpredictable. Use tactics that people never seen before, don't use the same strategy as everyone else, it may work sometimes, but it won't work always. So come up with your own strategy, and your enemies will be dead before they even understand what happened. Huh? I will give you three tips on how to rush into a building. When rushing into any building, throw as many grenades as possible. When doing these you're forcing your enemies to either move or die, both gives you an advantage. If you're lucky and got a knock, then push without any hesitation. As the other player would be reviving, you will get an advantage over it. If you directly rush into a house without any information you will instantly die, because campers are everywhere, instead see if you could find your enemies through windows and make the kill without entering into building at all. But sometimes your enemy will be very well aware that you're out there wanting to kill them, and they won't just peek out from the window allowing you to kill them, but in these situations, you should always keep changing positions, and it will confuse your enemy. If you think your enemy is camping on the first floor, try to get the high ground and see if you could find your enemies from nearby buildings. And the best trick here is the fake grenade trick. Throw a smoke grenade, and when the enemy hears the grenade sound, he will be forced to move as it might be frag grenade, push immediately to find your enemy running away. And the next tip is, one knock push strategy, this strategy is used by many pro players. As soon as you knock one enemy, just push with your full squad, because they have one man down, their gunpower would be low so you can take advantage of it. 
And this strategy is powerful in the close and mid-range, not effective in long ranges but still, you could give a try, but the enemy will be revived. Suppose you're in the middle of a gunfight and your health is so low, so you have to use health kits to heal up, but you're covered by multiple enemies. So in this type of situations, you have to throw the Molotov in the entrance area, where your enemies will most likely to come from. Anyway, the Molotovs will burn for about 9 seconds, that's enough time for you to use the first aids. But even if the players came through the Molotov, they will lose about 80 to 90% of their health, so you can kill them easily, or some enemies will get knocked immediately. If you want to shoot a moving vehicle from a house, just jump on the window and crouch, or prone depending on the distance and situation and start shooting. In this way, you will get a much better view and angle, so it makes easier for you to kill them. Always focus on the driver, taking down the driver is always the priority. Because once the driver is taken out the car will hit the brake and stop. The other guys would have to react quickly to take the driver's seat or to do anything. If you have a full team then it's easy to spray down the vehicle, but the driver is always the priority. Of course, you can blow up the vehicle if you have full team it's a lot easier. Don't stand still, no matter which place you are in, you can still get shots from any direction, so always keep moving, especially when someone is trying to snipe you, it will be very hard for them to hit you. Tip number 6, bait your enemies with loot. This trick works best when two different enemies are fighting, and one wins the fight and goes to loot them, it is your time to kill the enemy, while he is looting peacefully. Eighty percent of the time people tends to loot immediately after killing someone, so you can take advantage of that situation. Here is a cool mind trick. Suppose your enemy is hiding behind this tree, or any obstacle, or any type of cover. You have to place your crosshair on left side of the target, because most of the players tend to peek right instead of left, because right peek is so reliable and gives you much better angles, let me show you an example. This is how the right peak behind a cover would look like. And this is how left peak would look like. When we compare them side by side, you can clearly see that right peak has more field of view compared to left peak, so most of the players will use right peak. So aiming left side, or placing your crosshair to the left side of your target, and pre-firing will give you an advantage. Because these game characters are right-handed, if you observe carefully. Pre-aiming, or pre-firing. We talked about this in my previous videos, and I gave some examples, but now I will give you even more examples, and if you understand that you can pretty much instantly react to your enemy's movements and pre-fire at them. Here are a few pre-firing tricks in bootcamp that might help you, and I hope it will give you an idea on how you can pre-fire with these examples. If you see your opponent running in this way. You can simply pre-fire at the next window like this. And similarly when your opponent is running in this way. Just aim for the next available window like this, and pre-fire, or manual fire. If you see that your opponent is running towards this way. Then aim for any of these three windows I would recommend second and third windows, and start pre-firing to surprise them. And even when your opponent is running into the house, to escape from you. You can still shoot them through the following windows. Example like this. I hope you understand this method, if you did understand then you can do some crazy pre-fire that your opponent will never expect, and it will surprise them. If you exit or jump out from a vehicle at more than 100 km speed, you will lose almost 80 to 90% of your health, sometimes you might die. So what if you exit or jump out from a moving vehicle at around 50 km speed? You will lose around 30 to 40% of your health. The best way to exit from a vehicle without losing any health is below 30 km speed. So always check your speed when you are about to exit from your vehicle. If you exit at more than 30 km speed, then you will start losing health. Always switch to first person mode when jumping out from the windows. This is the third person view, your body will block most of your view. And now to the first person mode, you can clearly see the player. When we compare it side by side, you can notice the difference by yourself, in third person mode, the character's body will block half of the view. Whenever you're camping in corners like this, switch to FPP mode, to get some extra view.
now you can actually mark lines in the map. If you're really bad at memorizing the plane path, this tip is gonna help you a lot. So at the beginning of the game in Spawn Island, open your map and click on the mark thing. Now create a line on the plane path by tapping on each end, later when plane path disappeared, this will be very useful to determine where the players will most likely be, so you can either avoid those places or go find players. This one is a glitch, but you can use it as a trick. You can run while shooting by using this glitch. Your gun will not aim at the enemy, but the bullets will still hit them. How to use it? But in iPhone or iPad, this trick will randomly activate while switching between guns. I still have no idea how this works in iPhone, but I use iPhone, and it randomly works. In Android, you need to hold the fire button and open recent apps, and quickly open the game, and now you can run while shooting. If you see a bot with vest and helmet, don't just shoot that bot in the head or in the chest. Shoot in the legs in this way, you can kill the bot without damaging the helmet and vest, which can be useful for you. And the next tip is for gyroscope players only. Having a different sensitivity for sniping and spraying is really helpful. Change your sensitivity when you want to snipe and change it back to normal after. This may be hard at starting, but you'll get used to it. How to spray down enemies in a moving vehicle. If your enemy is driving the vehicle towards you in a straight line, then it's really easy to take them down. But the problem begins when your enemy is driving the vehicle around you in a circular path or in a horizontal path. Even if you shoot the vehicle perfectly your bullets may not hit the player. So this tip will help you to hit a moving target in a vehicle. If your target is 100 meters away, then you need to aim at the front bumper of the vehicle, an example is shown in the screen. This method will work for all the vehicles, such as Dacia, buggy, motorbike, including boats, you just need to aim for the front bumpers. If there are no bumpers, just imagine as there is one. When your target is around 200 meters you need to aim about 2 meters from the front bumper, and also you need to aim a bit upwards to fix the bullet drop, as shown in the screen. As the distance increases, you need to increase the gap between the front bumper according to the distance. You can actually practice this method with your friends in cheer park mode. Ask your friend to drive around randomly in a vehicle like this, and you just need to track the front bumper of the vehicle example like this. And later on, start shooting while aiming on the front bumper of the vehicle. Try your best to maintain the aim on the front bumper. Here is the handcam part on how I track the vehicles. I use full gyroscope, so I totally depend on gyroscope for vehicle spraying, and this is how my hand moments will look like, sometimes I might rotate my body in order to spray down the vehicle. If you're a non-gyroscope player, then it will be very difficult to track the moving vehicle. You need to drag with your thumb finger in a certain direction while also controlling recoil, which is pretty hard. Zigzag running. By running left and right while someone is shooting at you, zigzag running will help you by making harder for them to hit you, they will be confused about which side to shoot. So always do zigzag running when you getting shots. Maybe sometimes jump. And to look backside use free look it will help you to look back while running. Whenever you are trying to do the third party to someone, if you see someone knock just confirm those kills, you'll get those kills, not the enemy who knocked them, it's like stealing kills, but worth it, because you are getting free kills by stealing their kills. If your microphone making too much noise, then try using push to talk. To use push to talk, you need to hold on the push to talk button, and it will show you some arrows while it's working. Do you know that painkillers weigh the same amount as the first aid kit in your backpack? Do you think the first aid kit will be much heavier? But the painkiller is quite heavy in your bag. Painkiller is worse boost item in my opinion, because it takes up a lot of space in your bag, and extremely long to use, and also not very efficient. I recommend carrying energy drinks because you can take two energy drinks, and it doesn't take as much space in your bag as a painkiller, and gives you a little bit more boost than a single painkiller. To see your sniper shots after shooting. You need to hold scope and fire button both at the same time. And release them to release scope. By using this trick you can see where your bullet is hitting on your enemy. Learn to use lean function. Leaning right next to a wall will help you to hide your head. 
Sometimes your opponents can see your head while you're crouching next to a wall. So here is a comparison between normal crouch and crouch plus lean. As you can see, I can somehow see the head of a normal crouching player, but not the player with crouch plus leaning. This proves that using a lean function will hide your head while crouching next to a wall. This is how your opponents view when you crouch next to a wall. Your head is clearly visible. But if you crouch plus lean, then your head won't be visible mostly. And make sure to lean in the right way. Here is a circle shift tip. It's important to play in the circle in PUBG Mobile, it is the winning formula, a lot of time it's not about killing someone, it's about getting the best place in the next circle, and out positioning your opponent, giving yourself a tactical advantage. Depending on the terrain where the circle will be formed, the best place I think to be is at the thinnest part of the line in between blue and white circle, as shown here. By using this strategy, you give yourself a better position to hold, the blue zone being at your back will make it less likely you will get attacked from behind, this will give you more time to focus on the terrain in front of you. It's important to take notes of your geographical surroundings like mountains and house compounds, also keep an eye on supply drops, these will give you a better idea where players will be. Players tends to move to middle of the circle thinking they would be in the next circle, but in reality, if you stay in middle you will most likely to get shots from all the directions. So I would not recommend moving to the center of the circle, try to stay on edges with blue zone to be more safe. If you have only two players in the vehicle it's good call to be on the same side of the vehicle. In this way, if you need to get out of the vehicle, you will get out on the same side. Let's say enemies are coming towards us. You will be on this side and ready to fight them. And you can use the vehicle as your cover. Tip, don't engage in a fight when you don't have any nearby cover, what I mean is, you see an enemy running in an open field, and you are also in an open area where you don't have any cover nearby. But you started shooting at the enemy anyway, later you messed up the spray, now you are in a big trouble because your opponent is going to shoot back at you, and you don't have any cover to hide. This is why I always recommend you to check for cover, before you engage in a fight with your opponent, make sure you have a cover nearby, when you have a cover, you can hide if you mess up the spray, a tree or a rock or some other type of obstacles that can provide you with some cover. The next tip is kinda similar, it's like waiting for your opponent to come out from the cover completely, so you can kill the opponent easily. Let's just say you see an enemy running, the first thing you have to do is check if the enemy has nearby covers, if the enemy does have any nearby cover, it's not worth shooting, unless you have really good spraying skills. If you do shoot at the opponent anyway, then the enemy will hide behind the cover immediately, now the enemy knows your location. So this is why, I always wait for the opponent to come out from their covers completely or halfway through at least, this gives you some extra time to take down the opponent. Once again, remember to check for your enemy's nearby cover, when you see them running like this, wait until the enemy is halfway between covers, and start shooting, it will be easier for you since they don't have any cover to hide. Now the last one, this tip is especially for those people who don't use jump and climb separate, you can still do jump shot near a wall example like this. If you face towards the wall and hit the jump button you will climb up the wall, so what you have to do here is, you need to face towards sideways or in a 90 degree direction to the wall. Now you will able to make that jump shot without climbing up the wall, in both directions. If you face towards the wall in any way while jumping, you will definitely climb up the wall. Before you going to do the jump shot make sure that you're facing in any other direction than the wall, here is a slow motion. The best way to stop a vehicle is by drifting either right or left. You need to use the brake and choose if you want to drift left or right move buttons to drift. You can also stop the vehicle by changing seats. How to do a perfect flank. If you successfully do a flank then you will achieve a position advantage over an enemy. Suppose your team holding on this left building, and your enemies are holding on this right building. If you rush directly then you only have a 50-50 chance of winning and losing the fight. But if you flank then you a higher chance of winning the fight because of position advantage, here is an example of how you can perform a flank. This is just an example to give you an idea on how to flank, this totally depends on situations and positions of your enemies. 
A flanker is not someone that is going to be predetermined before a game begins. Anyone can be a flanker, it totally depends on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. The idea of being a flanker is simple, get in a fight and if you have an opportunity to flank, then take the chance. As your team gets used to this more and more working together, then you will able to quickly realize when you are the player in the flanker position, don't hesitate to push fast and kill your opponents. If you're playing with squads, then learn how to sandwich your opponents, this will increase your chances of winning the fights. For example, this is your opponents at this location, and your team fighting with them in this marked location. The best thing you can do in this situations is by sending your teammate to flank, if you manage to flank right behind your opponents, then you can have higher chances of winning the fight. This is basically flanking, but this is what I call a sandwich flank. Works best in open fields and ridges with small covers. Try not to let your opponents know you're flanking, if they do then try to get some strong cover example like this. From here you can put pressure on your opponents from both sides, front and back. And I'm sure you can win almost any fights if you manage to sandwich them correctly. Moving while looting is extremely helpful movement, it just saves your life if anyone shoots you with a sniper rifle, I think most players know this by now. To do this movement you need to move your joystick left and right, while looting crates is going to prevent you from getting easy headshots. You can also do the same movement while healing, but you need to add crouch to the movement. How to handle the panic situation? Well, the best way to handle the panic situation is by getting used to it, what I mean is if you put yourself in panic situations, then you will know exactly what to do and how to handle that situation. The best way to learn how to handle panic situations is by dropping in bootcamp's main building. I would highly recommend playing solo versus squads, but it's totally up to you. And once you land in the main building try to get some kills, don't be afraid to fight, if you're afraid or scared to fight then you're at a massive disadvantage, the best way to learn this game is by putting yourself in danger. And as I always say stop worrying about your rank and KD, rank means nothing. It's a variable for the matchmaking system to properly place you in a match where you and your enemies are at the same skill level. If you die you die, you can always start a new match and drop at bootcamp again and again, until you kill everyone in the bootcamp. If you ever fighting against sniper. Try to use peak jiggle movement. Peak jiggle movement is using peak left and right continuously. This is going to prevent you from getting an easy headshot. Because while doing peak jiggle movement your head is moving continuously, which makes harder for your enemy to hit you. I will give you three reasons why you should carry pistols. One that doesn't take up space in your backpack. But you need to disable auto pickup ammo for all the pistols. 2. You can carry extra scopes like red dot and holo sight for your teammates and it won't take up space in your backpack. 3. You can also carry laser sight which can be used in most of the assault rifles and SMGs to increase the hip fire accuracy and still it doesn't take up space in your backpack. And if you could find scorpion it can carry vertical grip and half grip which would be best in my opinion if you constantly change between grips. Learning weapon sounds is extremely valuable, this is helpful in so many cases, determining what weapon your enemies are using and deciding whether to rush or not, and also if you hear AWM sniper sound, it is better to stay safe, instead of taking a fight against a most powerful weapon. Even picking up on the sounds of the suppressed weapons is a really helpful skill in this game, you can speed up learning of this skill by playing daily, and if you have enough hours in this game, you just going to recognize most of the weapon sounds. Anyway, moving on to the last tip, this is kinda like a training drill, many of you been asking me about how to shoot from a moving vehicle, example like these. You can actually practice this in classic mode while traveling in a vehicle, you have to randomly choose your target, it can be either a tree or rock or other some random obstacles, and then track them at first, example like this. And if you got extra ammo, you can start shooting at the random targets, so you can practice the recoil controlling as well as tracking the target. I practice in this way a lot, and this improves my tracking ability, and shooting from a moving vehicle is a really great skill to learn. Moving on to the tip number 3, this tip is about aim assist, if you don't know how aim assist works, it simply drags your crosshair or your aim towards your enemy, example like this. Anyway, after some testing with aim assist, I found that aim assist will work at its full capacity, only when your enemy is standing like this, as you can see the aim drags itself towards the enemy. 
But when the enemy is crouching, the aim assist doesn't work at its full capacity, it doesn't drag the aim towards the enemy like it used to do before when the enemy is standing. So it doesn't mean the aim assist won't work when the enemy is crouching. It does work but not as effective as it would be when the enemy is standing. Here is the side-by-side -side comparison, when the enemy is standing, the aim assist activates immediately and instantly, but when the enemy is crouching, the aim assist will take some time to activate. And when the enemy is proning, the aim assist may not work at all. So what I mean is that, the aim assist will work at its full capacity when the enemy is standing, and when the enemy is crouching, the aim assist will not work at its full capacity, it takes time to activate itself, and when the enemy is snaking, the aim assist may not work at all. So this shows us that, crouching and spraying is a lot safer than standing and spraying, and also crouching will reduce recoil. And when you go prone, aim assist doesn't work on you, so it's really hard to spray at someone when they are snaking, especially in long range fights. Plus it also reduces almost half of the recoil. Tip number 5. Dead teammates are really useful, they can guide you to get chicken dinner. Especially in panic situations where your ability to spot the enemies is so low, in these situations they can be really helpful if they know how to give a perfect callout. Dead teammates can't go into a panic situation because they are already dead, so they can spot the player and think normally. Here is an example, where I didn't spot the enemy, but my teammates did spot the enemy. In this type of situation listen to your teammates' callouts, and take the action really quickly. Enemies ahead! Work. Tip number 4. Try to avoid moving in the open field areas. Whenever you are rotating or traveling on foot, you need to make sure that you are rotating in the correct pathway. While moving in the open fields you try to maintain a position close to cover whether it is a tree or a rock or any type of obstacle, which can provide you with a cover. It's important to maintain a cover when you getting shots at you, you can quickly get into nearby obstacles which can provide you with a cover and start shooting back, this will give you the ability to put the pressure on your opponents. If your teammate got knocked in an open area without any cover, and the enemy is trying to finish. You can protect your teammate by standing behind your teammate like this, and jiggle left and right to provide a temporary cover, and take some shots to save from opponents until you reach a cover, here is an example. If the knocked player is an important player in your team, then you have to risk your life to save. Anyway, use this trick only while fighting in long range and maybe in mid range, mostly against snipers. I have seen a lot of players placing their free look or eyeball thing in the middle of the crosshair. And yes, of course, it does help you to aim better, but still, you need a lot of practice. So give it a try, place your free look in the middle of the screen, and check if it helps you to aim better, and if it does let me know in comments. Many of you asked me how to predict next zone, let me tell you one thing, you can't just predict zone, it's totally random. But there is a trick to be always inside of next zone, or at least close to next zone or next circle. Let's just imagine this red circle is the first zone. And Pachinki is in the middle of the circle. And this are the possible outcomes of the next circle, there might be more, but that's all I can think of. But Pachinki will always be in the next circle because the middle part or center part of the circle will always be in next zone. So if you stay in middle you will most likely to be in the next circle. Here are the few examples. The red circle in the middle part. Will be inside of the next circle. And once again red circle is center part and it will be in the next zone. It will be similar in other maps because every map has a different algorithm, but it will be similar to each other. And zone might end up in water rarely like 1 out of 100 or sometimes 1 out of 1000, if the zone formed in water, get a boat. The higher tier helmet is always better, even if it has only 1% durability left than a lower tier helmet that has full durability left. For example, a level 3 helmet has only one durability left, and will break if anything hits, and it will absorb the full power of car 98 shot, and keeping you alive, the helmet will break, but at least you won't die from that shot, as you would with level 2 helmet, so always choose a higher tier helmet, no matter what is the durability of it. But for vests, it's a little bit complicated than helmets are. I always recommend swapping to a lower tier vest, if the one you have right now is more than half damaged, 
Try to avoid getting your vest break during a gunfight, but not only you lose that body armor protection, but the movement vest breaks you will die faster. Try to keep the highest tier possible unless the vest is more than halfway damaged, then you should consider swapping to lower tier vest. Always use a fresh vest during gunfights. Tip number 7. Always try to pick up snipers. While playing squads make sure you are having one player running with a bolt action sniper rifles who are talented at shooting is extremely effective. If you are a sniper for your team or if any of your teammates are skilled at sniping, make sure you give them the proper gear. Firstly make sure your snipers are equipped with the highest range scope that your team has to offer, and in case if your team has level 3 helmet, be sure to give the helmet to your sniper as he will be needing it the most. If you play FPP mode you may notice that few weapons hip fire will block your view, example like this. To fix this you need to either use flash hider or a suppressor. Using a compensator will not fix this. This game is all about strategy from the very moment the plane starts flying. If you're playing squads then you need to know what you're good at, like specific roles, maybe you are good at spraying down enemies at any distance. Or maybe you are extremely good at close range. Or maybe you are really good at sniping. Maybe you are a good driver. Or maybe you're the guy who knows the whole map, each and every location and how to rotate each circle. Or maybe you could be the guy for baiting the enemies. Or maybe you can be the guy who uses smokes and grenades really well. Or have a great mind for how to flank your enemy. Or maybe you are the most important troll, the one who revives the teammate and supplies them with meds and ammo. No matter what is your role you have to identify with your squad. The four basic roles that every team should have, the first important role is IGL, IGL stands for in-game leader, and that is exactly what this player is, your IGL should be the most experienced player, and who is capable of giving the best call out in any situations, and your IGL should be the player where you put your faith to have major choices decide. These choices will include things like rotations, where to land, when to fight, and when to crash a compound. The second important role is supporter. Supporter player role is to give support to the whole team, things like reviving teammates, distributing meds and ammo to the team, or watching for potential threats while your team is fighting. A support player will frequently give out personal stats in order to protect the team, such as becoming a bait for opponents, allowing the rest of the squad to put out the offensive damage. And the next role is Entry Fragger. Your Entry Fragger is going to be the player you have in the lead while pushing or someone who is really good in close range. This player in most of the cases put themselves on the line to get knocked, so your team will follow up with a quick trade. In most team fights this is pretty simple, just shoot the guy shooting your teammate, but in buildings however, is where it may take a while to learn. If you're entry fragging and you know there are opponents inside, it is important to understand that your job is to push through a door and clear out enough space for your teammate to come behind you, try to give any information you can as quickly possible. As lastly you need to understand this pushes are in your control, and your teammates will depend on you, if you hesitate or step back and block doorways or don't give any information you're setting your team to fail. The last role is, the sniper. Having a sniper who is talented at shooting is extremely effective, in order to make sure you are utilizing this player to the best. It's important to give them the proper gear such as level 3 helmet as snipers are the one who will be the most trading headshots and try to give them the highest range scope that your team has to offer. Being a sniper requires a lot of skills, you may not get many kills as your teammates, but you will give a lot of damage, and also removing their armor, making it easier for your team to finish them. Speaking of cover, you can use your vehicle as cover in some situations. But there's a gap between tires from this gap you can get shots, so it's better to burst the tires and use the vehicle as cover. Now I think you might be safe from getting shots from below the vehicle. This vehicle is still usable, but not as fast as before. And also this depends on vehicles. Make sure you only burst two tires on the same side or it might be tough for you to travel. Or sometimes you don't need to burst the tires, it depends on the situation.
Do yourself a favor by having the same weapons in the same slot every time? Let's say you're carrying M4 and a sniper, and you have M4 in slot 1, and sniper in slot 2. In that way whenever you want to snipe someone, you will know sniper is in slot 2, and also it gives you muscle memory to understand easier. Try to take advantage of TPP, for example here I used my peek to get some extra view to spot this player on the top of the house, while not exposing my body. This tip is about game mechanics, your right peak actually exposes less of your body than left peak does. It's basically the way the character model works, left peak is going to reveal more of your body means bigger hitbox and more chances of getting hit than if you right peak. And also right peak gives you more field of view than left peak. I'm not saying that never use left peak, in certain cases you should do it, because it's the only choice. But keep in mind your body exposes a lot when you left peak. And the last tip, if you're fighting against shotgun, don't get too close to the enemy as they have the ability to one-shot you. Try to stay in a range where a shotgun isn't that powerful. Anyway, that's all I got for this video, I hope you learned something new, if you did hit the like button, and subscribe for more upcoming videos like these, see you guys in the next one.